Hi there. A few weeks ago, I hit a goat during a trip which resulted in a broken front bumper cover, center grill, condenser, radiator, and a few other components. In this video, I am going to show you how I replaced my radiator. First of all, you need to disconnect the battery, remove the front bumper cover, and drain out coolant. To see how to remove the front bumper cover and drain coolant, see the links in the description. Once the front bumper cover is out, remove the air intake ducts. They are held on by Philips head style screws. The radiator on this car has an ATF or Automatic Transmission Fluid Cooler Integrated. Two ATF lines are connected to the radiator ATF cooler, one at the top, one at the bottom. To prevent dirt from entering the transmission system, first vacuum the area. Then use a damp cloth to clean the area. The ATF lines are held on by 10 mm bolts. First, remove the top bolt, then remove the bottom bolt. They are not very tight. Now, it's time to pull out the ATF lines from the radiator. Place a recipient under the car. This vacuum line is in the way and you risk breaking it. So, gently pull it out of its holder and flip it upwards. Pulling out the ATF cooling lines will be difficult. You won't be able to pull them by hand. I eventually used this prying tool. There you go. Oof. Cover the line opening. I used the cap that came with the new radiator. Now the bottom part. This front lock carrier reinforcing bar is in the way. I need to remove it first. Then I used the prying tool to pry the ATF line out.
Yeah. Ah. Oh. As you can see, there are two brackets down here. The bottom bolt is holding both the upper and the lower ATF lines brackets to the radiator. Cover the line opening. I used the cap that came with the new radiator. Here is about how much ETF or automatic transmission fluid that came out. Tie the ETF lines onto something. Now, it's time to pull out the radiator coolant hoses connecting to the radiator. There are three of them. One on the passenger side at the bottom and two on the driver's side, one at the top, one at the bottom. Use a hook to pull up the retaining spring. Okay. Spray WD-40 penetrating oil. Let it penetrate for a few minutes. Then pull while wiggling. It will not be easy. Keep spraying penetrating oil and pulling. This side is done. Oh, finally. Now, the driver's side lower part. You will need to remove this other front lock carrier reinforcing bar for better access. Same procedure. Pull up the retaining spring. Spray WD-40 penetrating oil. Pull. Power steering cooling lines are obstructing the way pretty much here. So I ended up doing this. The hose connection is visible from the front. I used a pry tool to tap the hose off the radiator, which worked. The upper hose on the driver's side came off much easily because I replaced the upper radiator hose a few years ago. The reason why I replaced it is because of a broken return nipple, so be very cautious around the nipple. Don't grab it when pulling. Grab another area of the hose or you risk weakening or breaking it. Now that the radiator is freed at the back, we can remove it from the front. First, we are going to remove the air duct, then the bracket for the horns, then the front bumper bar. To remove the air duct, you need a T30 Torx. 
If you have a snow screen, pull it out first. The air duct is held on by spreader rivets. To remove the bracket for the horns, you need a 10 mm. The harness is clipped onto the front of the car. Gently pull the clips and set the bracket with the horns aside. To remove the front bumper bar, you need a 13 mm, but first use a T30 Torx to remove the headlight adjustment brackets. Here are the nuts removed at the bottom. Put on safety gloves. This is the exterior temperature sensor. Its holder broke during the impact. We now need to set the power steering cooler coil aside. To remove the power steering cooler coil retaining bolts, you need a T30 Torx. This side broke during the impact. Here is the other side. Now, 
I am going to pivot the coil upwards. Be gentle. I attached it to this bumper bar holder. There are two air guides left and right of the radiator. To remove them, you need a T20 Torx. On this side, there are a few clips and an AC line attached to the air guide. To remove it, the condenser needs to be unfastened first or the AC line needs to be disconnected depending on whether you are replacing the condenser or not. In my case, the condenser also needs to be replaced. so. I remove the AC lines at this point before unfastening it from the radiator. If you do not need to replace the condenser, do not touch the AC connections. Just unfasten the condenser and set it down aside with the AC lines connected. First, let's disconnect this connector from the condenser. It is always a good idea to protect the connectors. The condenser is held on by 4 T30 Torx bolts. You don't want this to happen if you are not replacing the condenser. Now, it's time to remove the radiator. The radiator is secured onto the top of the front lock carrier with two retaining pins. To remove the pins, you need two flat head screwdrivers. One to release the clip and one to pry it out.
The radiator is now free. To take it out, pull the top part towards you and pull it up out of the lower mounts. Some coolant will leak to the floor. It is late and lighting is poor. Let's continue tomorrow. It is recommended to replace the radiator lower mounts. One of mine got damaged during the impact. The part number of the radiator lower mount is 8D01212700. You need two pieces. It is recommended to replace the radiator hose O-rings. My new radiator came with replacement O-rings. You need two big O-rings and one small O-ring. The part number for the bigger O-rings is 4E012166. I could not find the part number for the smaller O-ring, but WHT002001 could be it. 
I clean the inside of the holes. I remove the old o-ring I install the new o-ring I lubricate the o-ring and the inside of the hose with coolant. I do the same for the two other hoses. Here is the new radiator next to the old one. Here are the old radiator upper mounts. There is also a plastic strip on top of the radiator. The new radiator does not come with the mounts or the strip. The part number of my old radiator is 4F012125110. The part number of the new one is 4F012125110. I purchased an OEM radiator made by Nissan's. Here are the replacement radiator upper mounts. The part number of the radiator upper mount is 4F0 
two, seven, six. You need two pieces. Gently lift the radiator and with the hose ports facing the car, install the lower feet inside the lower mounts first. Don't forget to place the radiator top plastic trim. Now, push the top part of the radiator inside the front lock carrier. Here are the replacement radiator attachment pins. The part number of the radiator attachment pin is 8D0 one two one two zero zero you need two pieces here is how you install them make sure you position them such a way that it will be easier to remove them the next time if need be Do not worry about these slight impressions on the fins while installing the radiator. The radiator is still fine. Now it's time to install back the condenser or the new condenser depending on whether you are replacing the condenser or not. The condenser will press firm against the radiator. T30 bolts, 6 newton meters. Connect back the connector to the condenser.
Please back the air guides left and right. T20 bolts, not too tight. Place back the cooling coil for the power steering. T30 bolts, 9 newton meters. Place back the bracket for the horns. Ten millimeter bolts, eight newton meters. Place back the air duct. Remember, these are plastic rivets, not tight. Place back the front bumper bar. Thirteen millimeter bolts, twenty newton meters. Please back to headlight adjustment brackets. T30 bolts, 
6 newton meters. Front side is done. Now the back side. Let's connect the coolant hoses. Avoid touching this upper radiator hose nipple. All connected. Here are views from the front. Now the ETF cooler lines. You should replace the ETF cooler line or rings. The part number for the ETF cooler line or ring is N 906 01 you need two pieces. Let's start with the bottom. Coat the new o-ring with transmission oil. The part number of the ETF format transmission is G060162 A2.
let this part a little loose for now. Now the top. Before connecting the line, I want to pour in about the quantity of ETF that came out. Here is a little less of what came out and here is what I am putting in. This method did not work. This one neither. This one worked. Now replacing the o-ring. Coat the new o-ring with transmission oil. Ten millimeter bolt, five Newton meters. We can now tighten the bottom bolt. Ten millimeter bolt, five Newton meters. Shut the coolant draining port. Place back the front lock carrier reinforcing bar on each side. Place back the vacuum line. Place back the front engine cover. Place back the air ducts. Now, let's pour in new coolant. It needs to be brand new coolant. Don't use the old coolant. You will need at least 8 liters of your coolant mix. I first added 4 liters. About an hour later, I added 2 more liters. Check the engine bay. Check under the car for leaks.
Connect the battery. Turn on the ignition. Clear engine fault codes. Start the engine. We haven't installed the front bumper cover yet, so these warnings are normal. Temporary smoke coming out of the engine bay is normal because I lost a lot of coolant after the impact. No leaks. All good. Place the front bumper cover back. To see how to install the front bumper cover, see the link in the description. Go on a test drive. The next day, the coolant expansion tank was empty, but there was no leak on the floor, which means air in the system got pushed up. I topped off with a little more than two liters. That is a total of eight liters plus a little more. Keep an eye on the coolant level and top off if necessary when the engine is cold. Job complete!